hi de hi yeah so um and the reason why there's like two different responses to the claim I am God in the West and in the East is because the Western idea of God is formed by Christianity and well, at least mainstream and orthodox Christianity, not so much by what the Bible explicitly says. Um, and in that idea of reality, they've got God as like this kind of monarch, which is consciously in control of everything and everything else at his will, that you better perform miracles and stuff like that. Whereas uh, Eastern kind of concept of God, as I understand it, well, it's probably not, not uniform, there's, there's, like, like, like because I've been on the inside of Christianity and I've both studied it, it's much more complex than that. There is there's a wider variety of concepts of what God is and and what faith is and stuff like that. So East, the Eastern idea is probably the same. But the Eastern concept that, that I kind of get or, or know is that God's a kind of context within which stuff happens, you know. We're, he is the thing that gives stuff meaning, like the, the bit, the interstitial space maybe, and, and, and the, the ground for all being, and he is everything. Um, but it's funnily enough, the, the strongest kind of expression of Advaita that I've come across is in the Bible. For all things are from God, through God and to God, you know. There's nothing else but God. And, and, and even the Bible has as the end result in certain interpretations that God be all in all. Um, but it's, it's also got, like God's in control of everything. And, and there was like the, the doctrine of Calvinism, which has God, um, which has us not having free will. You know, the, the whole predestination kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I was sectioned for a bit, but then, then I, I kind of made an appeal. I got on very well with psychiatrists so there. I'd speak to them about how drugs would work. Well, I'll show them this writing and then the psychiatrist would go, yeah, yeah, you understand it. And then when I appealed, he'll go, he, he, he sat me down and he goes, Chris, you're going to be let out. You're, you're fine, mate. Um, but, but he also said to me that in the appeal room, I'm going to have to say these things, but really you're going to be let out. And, and in my opinion, you're fine, but I'm going to have to say these, the, what I say in, in, the, in the appeal. So it came to the appeal and, um, and we were, like my dad was sat on one side of me, I was sat on another side and you had a black nurse there. I got nothing against, I, just, I don't know what word to call it, he's just, just, just a dark skinned person. But, but he was sat there and um, I think it was agency staff. He'd never seen me before, which is quite funny. And then you had a psychiatrist there and they were like, yeah, yeah, we think, um, we think Chris is okay to be let out in the community and that, but he should carry on taking his medication. Um, I was like, no, I'm not going to take it anymore. The, the medication was bloody awful. They gave me this thing called Risperidone. And it brought out in me all the symptoms that you typically call crazy, like walking backwards and forwards, stepping from foot to foot. And it was like, I always wanted to do something, but I couldn't sit down and settle to anything. I could actually imagine killing myself if I had to take it forever and ever and ever. And I feel sorry for people that, that don't stand on their own two feet, that would just take the doctor's word for it and think, oh, you know, it's better this than, than that. And then it must be awful. It must be awful. It shut up my head and for like, the voice in my nut is generally quite good. Often it puts me down, it would put me down, but often it's a great source of pleasure and entertainment, which I'm trying to share with YouTube. So, yeah, so the appeal went on and they were like, they were saying all that. And then it's funny, my dad was more vocal than I was. I was just sat there, I was trusting God at the time. I thought it was God, I was just trusting him. Um, and some beautiful experiences when I was searching as well. There was, I, I thought I saw the communication of demons between individuals and I, I swear somebody came up to me with a notepad and they showed me it, it had, it had what I'd been thinking on it. Um, I'm not sure if I was delusional. I think I might have gone a bit over the edge when I was first put there. It's quite a kind of shocking experience. You're all of a sudden you're free and then the next second you're incarcerated. Uh, it, it was quite, but no, I, I, for me, the whole thing was amazing. I just felt, felt so close to God. I felt, I, I fell in a divine state. I, I almost thought I was the Messiah. I, I thought at any second I was going to be transported to Israel <laughs> and I'm going to initiate the end times. But um, of course that was all delusional and it, it wasn't so much a result of being insane or, or anything like that. It was just a false interpretation of the experience. The experience was one of openness, inclusion and freedom and liberty and, and childlike wonder, you know, just like, wow. I've missed this my whole life. I get it. I get it. And it was, and it was, oh, everybody's got to hear about it. Um, and then, 
and then I was out and then I'll continue in the next video. Goodbye.